These are mnemonics. Mnemonics are memory aids. As far as your test goes, just know that mnemonics are memory aids that you create, right, through elaborative rehearsal. So when people say, oh, method of loci, what is that? You could have a mnemonic to help you talk about what it is if you wanted to. Method of loci, sequential pieces of information to be remembered are first associated with sequential locations in a very familiar room or location. You might have grown up a trailer, you might have grown up in an apartment, you might have grown up in a house, but you grew up somewhere and you probably spent more time in a place that you identify. Maybe it's your house now, maybe you moved around a lot, but you've been in your house now. So I could think, if I want to remember Okay, I want orange juice, I want uh, dryer sheets, I want um, bread, and I want to get some carpet cleaner when I go to the store today. One way of remembering that rather short list, and I can make it much longer than that, is to simply think in your mind, oh yeah, okay, I'm in the kitchen in my house that I grew up in, and I see myself pouring orange juice all over the bread. And it's soaking up all that bread in the kitchen. And then it's a mess. And I go over to the laundry room, oh, but there's no dryer sheets, right? And that's where I'm in the laundry room remembering dryer sheets. And then I'm like, man, to hell with this. I'm going to go into the living room. Oh, God, it stinks in here. I need to get that carpet freshener. Now when you get to the store and you try to remember and you're like, oh, what was that list? You just run through the house and you remember the story you made up. When retrieving information, you mentally go around the room and retrieve the item in each location. Lo using elaborate mental imagery helps. As I gave an ex uh, example the other day where my mom in her 50s was like calling me and saying, I think I might be getting dementia because I don't know where my car keys are. And I said, well, I don't know where mine are either. The way that you would fix that is to pay explicit attention to where you put the car keys, right? So what happens is... It's good to make loud noises help people reorient their attention. You come home from the store and you got a bunch of groceries and there's the mail and the dog's barking and you open the door and there's the kids and everybody's talking and everything over here and you're moving, you got to get to the kitchen and you put your keys on the table and they drop off and they go somewhere else. You didn't see that because you're doing all this stuff. The phone's ringing, you put up the groceries, you take care of the kids, you feed the dog and the next day you got to leave and you're like, oh, where the hell are my keys? I don't know. You think somebody took my keys? Who would take my keys? And you start running through these elaborate paranoid schemes in your head of how the keys disappeared. Maybe it was paranormal activity, but a damn sure not here anywhere. I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe my memory's failing me. But no, it's not. Your keys are right where they were when you left them and didn't pay attention. If you want to know where your keys are tomorrow, it's pretty straightforward. All you got to do when you come in now is this. Kids are talking, dogs, hold on, everybody, hold on, the keys, the keys, my God, the keys. We must know where the keys are. They're going to be big keys, and they're going to be sitting right here on the coffee table, on the coffee table, unless you move them. If you move the keys, please tell me where the keys are when you move them, because you know I trust you. And I'm imagining in my head a giant key that could crush the coffee table. And then I'm going to go put up all the groceries. Then I'm going to feed the kids. Then I'm going to feed the dog. And then the next day I'm looking for my keys. Where are my keys? They're on the coffee table. You ain't never going to forget that, right? But who would do that? Therein lies all of your memory trick seminars, right? People are like, I still can't remember 50 people's names. Of course not. But if you made up a big old elaborate crazy story about every single person you met and you really focused and focused and focused, you'd remember more than you didn't remember. But that's the trick. The trick isn't something that's magical. It's getting you to use the information more elaborately. I'll use this one real quick for y'all because we'll do it in personality chapter. The big five personality, there's five traits. Openness, conscientious, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Ocean. I don't know what the Great Lakes are unless I see homes, but if I see homes, you know what? Now I know. Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. If I want to know the visual spectrum, I can't tell it to you unless I say Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Out here is ultraviolet, out here is ultra red. It's just that simple, but nobody does it. So they think there's something wrong with them. But if you take the time to create these devices, you're more likely to remember them. Acronyms are just another way to elaborate. Elaboration 
It's just a way to work with the material more. And the more you work with it, the less likely you are to lose it. Right? Some of you just forget things, not because there's something wrong with you, but because we're human beings. Some people don't want to dress up today. Some people forgot we was going to do formal Friday. And other people remembered that we was going to do formal Friday, and they wanted to. Yeah, they dressed up. That's it. You're like, what? Seriously? Y'all did that? Hell yeah. Check it out. Right? So that memory turns out to be a very tricky thing. We've already looked at how eyewitness testimony and what people think it is. They edit the information as they perceive the information, and then we edit it as we retrieve the information. Sometimes we bias our memory based on our schemas, and it keeps us from having a very objective view on what we did or did not perceive or do or do not remember. And if you really want to remember something, you need to pay attention to it. You need to force yourself to pay attention to it, and elaboration is one of the ways to do that. So you can elaborate with a lot of different techniques, the method of loci which we talked about, we can make a peg word system and visually associate items in a jingle or something like that. So you could come up with a little tune or a ditty if you want to. Uh, as I told you early on, Cool Mo D did that with the PBS show way back in the day before it's time where he basically worked math rules into a rap. And if you learned to rap, you knew the rule. So you could do all kinds of creative things, but what you're really doing is creating ways to remember because you're using the information. The acronyms where we left off, and we talked about ocean being your big five personality traits, homes being the, the five great lakes, visual spectrum being Roy G. Biv, and you could go on and on and on. If you're gonna go into medicine, you're gonna have to know the 12 cranial nerves. Be helpful if you came up with something that catchy to help you remember that. Multi-coding theory is the idea that the more ways you attempt to code information, remember we talked about the encoding process, and then we have the storage process, and then we have the retrieval process. Well, encoding it can happen a lot of ways. The more ways you do it, the better off you are. So if I speak it out loud, I'm using my vocal ability, and that's one way to process information. If I say it out loud, I'm then also hearing myself say it out loud. That's an auditory way. That's what you're hearing right now. All right, you're hearing me speak, so that's auditory processing. If you read it, as you're reading off this, that's visual processing. If you write it down while you're hearing it and reading it, that's a kinesthetic mode of coding. You can elaborate on it. Self-reference helps if you can make it relevant to your life. We're like, well, how can I make this relevant to my life? Well, that's creativity, right? It's elaborating. Uh, mnemonics and things of that nature. So if you were in my uh, how to study seminar, then you would have heard me talk about an example where I had to remember a lot of information, and I condensed it down from a big stack to a little stack, and I did it over and over, but I also then read it out loud to an MP3 recorder, and then on my way to Chattanooga, I had it reading back to me what I had read into it. And man, I nailed that test to the wall when I got there because I was over prepared and not anxious about taking the test.